OK, so let's get this out of the way up front. Cortana is not only the worst mission in Halo 3, but perhaps the most disappointing in the entire Halo trilogy, from a gameplay perspective at least. It is repetitive, it is often utterly frustrating to play, and it can at times be incredibly confusing as well. But it does still have some positive points too, and in this video I want to take as balanced a look as I can at the design behind what is perhaps Halo's most infamous mission. If you enjoy the video, do consider liking, subscribing and all that other good stuff, and now let's kick things off at the very beginning of the mission. We join Master Chief as he flies into the flood corrupted city of High Charity to rescue Cortana from the clutches of the Gravemind, hence the name of the mission. It's a very similar scene in terms of composition to the beginning of Halo Combat Evolves the Moor, and it's appropriate the mission begins with a throwback, as you'll notice it becomes something of a theme as the level progresses. The chapter name Rampant is one I really like too, because there are a couple of things it could be referring to. With the camera panning back to show a huge room covered in flood biomatter, it could be speaking to the idea of the flood running rampant and how they've completely infested the city of High Charity. Or it could very well be referring to the impending threat of AI Cortana's rampancy, which again makes a lot of sense given what happens as the mission progresses. Straight off the bat, Bungie decides to forego any kind of build up before players encounter the flood, opting instead to have a wave of infectors immediately close in on them. This is a missed opportunity to say the least. If players score 15,000 points on this level, they receive an achievement named Orpheus, a reference to the Greek story of Orpheus braving the underworld to rescue his wife, which is a clear parallel to what happens during this level as Master Chief travels into the depths of this nightmarish setting. Descending into Hell, or indeed Halo's version of Hell, should feel unsettling, perhaps even frightening, but because Bungie chooses to begin the action so early, it never really does. The shooting starts so quickly and is so sustained throughout that there's no time whatsoever for players to actually appreciate the gravity of the situation they find themselves in. What Cortana is crying out for at its start is a period of relative calm, a few moments during which players can move further into the depths of the city before any flood even make an appearance. This is something 343 Guilty Spark does so well in Halo Combat Evolved, with around half of the entire mission passing by before the flood are finally revealed for the very first time. Given it's obvious the Flood are going to arrive at some point during Cortana, the same level of build up here isn't necessary, but it's a real shame there isn't at least a little more subtlety in the way Bungie handles these opening moments. But alas, the shooting does begin straight away, and even during these early stages, one of Cortana's most glaring flaws quickly becomes evident. The lack of variety in the colour palette used across both the Flood and the environment itself. Now don't get me wrong, the infestation throughout High Charity is gorgeous in the most horrible way possible, with flood biomatter and moving pustules covering almost every surface. And it's a really nice progression from Floodgate, Halo 3's first mission featuring the flood. During that level, players were shown just how quickly the flood could infest an area, and in Cortana, they get to see just how bad things can get when the flood are left to run amok for an extended period of time. In terms of the colour palette issue, the distinction between the flood and the environment sometimes causes no problems whatsoever, predominantly when players are heading in one direction down more narrow sections of the map. But as areas become multi-tiered and filled with little nooks, crannies and passageways everywhere, it often becomes a challenge to spot all of the flood surrounding you. They are a mostly yellow brownish hue, and the environment is a mostly yellow brownish hue, and while I'm not entirely sure there's any way around that problem, it nevertheless does nothing other than serve to frustrate, with the flood often blending into the background a little too well. And there's a secondary problem with this lack of variety. It causes Cortana to quickly become a very aesthetically boring mission, even if the environment's design is well done. Not long after their first encounter with the Flood, players are stopped in their track by the Gravemind as he delivers a message. Child of my enemy, why have you come? I offer no forgiveness. A father's sins pass to his son. When I described Cortana as a disappointing experience gameplay wise, it's moments like this that ensure, at least in my mind, that the mission does still hold some value, because while it's absolutely not an enjoyable 30 or so minutes to actually play, the level is very important in terms of Halo's overall story. It's the climactic moment in the relationship between Master Chief and Cortana, with Master Chief demonstrating just how far he'll actually go for the one he seemingly cares about most. 
And it's a pivotal moment in Halo 3's story as well. Besides being reunited with Cortana herself, players also need to reach her as she holds the activation index needed to activate another Halo and finally put an end to the Flood threat. The Grave Mind, on the other hand, is trying to find out exactly what Cortana knows, and so the mind games he plays with Chief throughout the mission, while at the same time torturing Cortana, make a lot of sense and do much to add to the mission's atmosphere. The first message, for example, references the Forerunners, the idea that their sins are those of humans too, and that the Grave Mind and the Flood still hold a grudge. It's great world building. But there is an issue with these brief stoppages, not in terms of plot, but in terms of execution. I understand that stopping players in their tracks and distorting the screen lends a feeling of importance to these moments, but I can't help but feel like the decision to take agency away from players in a mission which already frustrates for other reasons is not a particularly wise one, especially given how frequently these stoppages occur. They're nowhere near as jarring as, say, Gears of War's extraordinarily grating walking while talking on the radio segments, but they do begin to wear a little thin quite early on. Again, much like the issues with colour, the decision made here is a sound one in terms of what it means for the story in the world of Halo, but the way these interludes are executed simply doesn't translate into entertaining gameplay. Soon after the first Gravemind encounter, players are interrupted again, this time by Cortana, who is clearly suffering at the hands, or indeed tentacles, of the Gravemind. I could be wrong here, but what I like about Cortana's appearances during this level especially is that it's not entirely clear what's actually happening. It could be Cortana contacting Master Chief on purpose, it could be the Gravemind taunting him, it could be Master Chief hallucinating, or it could even be Cortana unintentionally transmitting to Master Chief as she enters the early stages of rampancy. It gives the mission an even greater sense of urgency and helps demonstrate just how much is at stake. It's not just about saving the galaxy from the Flood, but about saving Cortana from them too. The chamber players find themselves in after this interlude is Cortana's first large combat arena, and as you might expect, it quickly fills to the brim with Flood. It's an impressive encounter in terms of scale, but it's also where the flaws in much of Cortana's level design begins to show. The arena makes a lot of sense in terms of size. In order for Bungie to include as many Flood as they do, they had to make the areas encounters like this take place in large enough that there's room to back up and move away from an enemy whose primary tactic is to advance directly towards players. The encounter itself is also well designed in that it intensifies as players make their way further into the arena, something which isn't always the case later on, and that helps ensure that players aren't cornered too near its entrance, which would lead to much of the rest of the arena remaining unused. Unfortunately, what isn't well thought out here is how the enemies interact with the environment, and this is a problem during much of Cortana from this point onwards. I like stalkers as an enemy type, and the fact they can transform into either tanks or ranged forms is an interesting concept, but the sheer number of them encountered during combat means players are often faced with the daunting prospect of fighting quite a few tank and ranged forms at the same time. Fighting predominantly ranged forms while fending off a tank or two isn't a problem, and vice versa, fighting a number of tanks while one or two ranged forms attack from a distance isn't an issue either. But much of the time in Cortana, players are assaulted by so many of each that it not only makes combat disorientating, which isn't ideal given the issues I've already discussed with the colour palette, but also frustrating as it feels like there's no right answer combat-wise. Focusing on the tanks first, the projectiles fired by the ranged forms can quickly become overwhelming, but focusing on the ranged forms first means being left open to powerful attacks from the tanks and any other enemies in the vicinity. Of course, there's the argument that this is what fighting the Flood should feel like. The trick is in the name, and fighting them should feel overwhelming. But in my view, that argument doesn't outweigh the negative impact this doubling down on enemy types has on gameplay. And this problem is exacerbated by the fact that the style of encounter is essentially all players experience during Cortana. Every large combat arena features a similar mix of enemies, and between these samey encounters and the aesthetically repetitive environment, you end up with what is basically the sequel to Halo Combat Evolves the Library. It pains me to say it, but I don't think Bungie at all learnt their lesson from Halo's most hated mission, as Cortana does feel like something of a retread. Sure, it's a slightly more interesting environment than the library, and there's a wider variety of enemies, but ultimately it's still the same encounters taking place in the same environment over and over again. When I took a closer look at the library, I came to the conclusion that it was crying out for more variety, which could have come in the form of new enemies, a boss, or perhaps something clever I'd not even thought of. And it's exactly the same here. Throwing in something, anything, to make this mission less repetitive would have made a huge difference. 
personally, I think a new flood form unseen outside of the hive would have been a great addition, but there were also plans at one stage for Cortana to end with a boss fight, during which Cortana piloted a scarab and attacked the Gravemind, while Master Chief stood atop it fighting off the flood, which would have been pretty brilliant too. Before we move on from this area, I also want to quickly point out the deceased marine tucked just out of sight alongside a pelican, a flamethrower, and another short message from Cortana. Neither the message nor the marine are overly exciting, but they're both nice examples of environmental storytelling which Bungie has done so well in the past, notably in 343 Guilty Spark, my favourite of any level featuring the Flood. At first, I thought the nearby flamethrower indicated some kind of desperate last stand, but with a case full of grenades and a rocket launcher plus ammo nearby, along with the fact the marine hasn't been turned by the flood, I'd say it's more likely they were hiding in the hope that they might at some point be rescued. The message and the marine are both lovely touches, and I would have really enjoyed seeing more of this kind of thing woven into the wider level. And speaking of nice touches, there's something else here for players to notice too. If you look into the distance at what now remains of High Charity, you can see the Mausoleum of the Arbiter. It's one of a few different areas from Halo 2 players can spot during Cortana, and its inclusion does so much to foster a feeling of consistency in the world. Given that this level was originally meant to be a continuation of Floodgate before later being recycled, it's at least somewhat understandable that we don't get to see more familiar sights from throughout High Charity in person, but even including them as they are is still a positive in my book. Moving on, now with Flamethrower in hand, players are soon contacted again by the Gravemind. Of course you came for her. We exist together now. Two corpses in one grave. This one I love, as the We Exist Together Now, Two Corpses in One Grave line is a direct throwback to the same line spoken by the Gravemind during the level High Charity in Halo 2. We exist together now. Two corpses in one grave. On that occasion, the Prophet of Mercy was the other corpse, but here he's referring to Cortana, and it again continues to foster that sense of unease around her, which I really like. At this point, players are surrounded by the Flood in an incredibly unsettling environment, and these short interludes, while at times irritating, help create the impression that the one thing still remotely human in some capacity, namely Cortana, may not be by the time she's rescued. Not long after, players hear another message from Cortana and the Gravemind. A collection of lies, that's all I am. Stolen thoughts and memories. And yet, perhaps a part of her remains. <laughs> This is a great example of Bungie making it difficult to ascertain who is actually doing the talking during these scenes. At surface level, it's a message from Cortana followed by a message from the Gravemind, but I don't think that's the case, as it seems far too convenient that the Gravemind chooses to speak immediately after Cortana. The earlier moment with Cortana, I think, was exactly that, a moment with Cortana as she struggled with what was happening to her, whereas here, I think it's quite clear that the Gravemind is using Cortana's likeness to taunt Master Chief, to try and break him psychologically. There's not much to say about the next flood encounter in another large combat arena, but I do want to highlight something here, Cortana's next message. Can I speak with you please? I am honestly staggered that anyone at Bungie thought this was a good idea, being that there's almost zero chance players won't be involved in combat as it plays, which makes this message pretty much unintelligible. There's another nice message on the lower level for players, which harks back to Master Chief's relationship with Dr. Halsey, whom Cortana is based on, but honestly at this point I was so unimpressed by what had just happened with the other message that it kind of took the shine off a little bit. Next up is a narrower section, which also features a message from Cortana that, much like the one witnessed in the previous area, plays without stopping the player, and again, it remains unclear whom these messages are actually coming from, which works really well. 
You'd think a section that is at least attempting to push players in one direction, as opposed to around a more open area, would suffer less from the issue around tanks and ranged forms discussed earlier, which is in part true, but it's also where other cracks begin to appear in how the level is designed as well. During this section, because of the sheer number of flood advancing on players, it's very easy to get stuck fighting them near the area's beginning without actually making any forward progress, which makes the encounter feel repetitive as much of the combat takes place in a very small area. Furthermore, when players do begin to advance, orientation can very quickly become an issue as well. Because the flood are constantly moving, constantly changing their position, not just directly in front of players but on all sides and potentially above or below them too, it's nigh on impossible to get to the end of the section without spending a lot of time changing direction. And that means it can be very difficult to quickly ascertain exactly which direction to head in, especially given the fact players can very easily find themselves on a different platform or in a different area from where they actually began combat. The different walkways spread across the area do nothing to help with this either, as they sometimes block the view of what's further afield in both directions, making it even harder to ascertain where to head next. The next grave my message is another favourite of mine, as his rising anger at Master Chief's progression helps begin to hand back some of the power to the player. Time has taught me patience, but asking in you, freedom, I will know all that I possess! It's been a rough ride so far, but players are clearly doing something right if Gravemind is shaking with rage, and this serves to galvanise players as they continue to head deeper into high charity. The next open area is the biggest culprit in the entire mission for trapping players near its entrance for much of the time its combat encounter takes place. Upon entering, players are immediately swarmed by stalkers and other flood forms, and with ranged forms sometimes attacking from an incredible distance as well, it can be extremely frustrating to get through this section. It is perhaps the worst section in terms of the annoyance caused by ranged forms in the entire level, and Bungie even seems to have acknowledged this, placing a set of carbines right by the entrance so that players always have at least some chance of taking down enemies attacking from a distance. Combine this with stalkers constantly moving from surface to surface directly in in front of players, and it makes for what is in my view one of the most poorly thought out areas in any Halo game full stop. Up next is the reactor room, and this is without doubt Cortana's best area. It's a visual spectacle, and it also manages to avoid many of the irritations the earlier levels suffer from. The design behind the mix of Flood and Covenant architecture is at its best here, which means there's a much lower risk of getting lost, and the onslaught of the Flood doesn't feel quite as oppressive as it does in other areas thanks to them tending to only attack from the front or from behind. Reaching a long corridor and the home stretch to the room where Cortana is being kept, players witness more visions, and it's clear that the Gravemind is beginning to get desperate. There will be no more cowardice, no more anger, no more envy. You will show me what she hides, or I shall feast upon your bones! I consider this to be a particularly clever crescendo, because the visions of Cortana seen moments before rescuing her even seem to imply that she may have already gone rampant. This is UNSC AI serial number CTN 0452 9. Thankfully for worried players, that doesn't turn out to be the case, even though Cortana initially still seems concerned, and the cutscene which follows features a really touching reunion between her and Master Chief. But as heartwarming as much of this scene is, it's the final line which I really want to highlight. As Master Chief plugs Cortana back into his helmet, hopeful music swells and Cortana reminds the Chief that there are two of them in the suit. This is a direct callback to the same line spoken during the Pillar of Autumn, Halo Combat Evolve's first mission. Notice, however, the difference in delivery between the two scenes. Keep your head down, there's two of us in here now, remember? Just keep your head down. There's two of us in here now, remember? This is probably my favourite moment between the pair in the entire trilogy. Using just one short line, first spoken at the very beginning of the trilogy, and again near its very end, Bungie has quickly and succinctly demonstrated exactly how Master Chief and Cortana's relationship has changed. Upon first meeting, Cortana takes an almost motherly tone, reminding Master Chief of her presence in a very matter-of-fact way. But now, you can hear the affection in her voice. She speaks to Master Chief in an almost sultry tone, and it clearly demonstrates just how deep the relationship between the two of them is. 
The name of the mission's final chapter, Nor Hella Fury, is a good one, and refers to the famous phrase, Nor Hella Fury like a woman scorned, from William Congreve's 1697 play The Morning Bride, and the implication is clear, freed from the Gravemind's clutches, Cortana will soon have her revenge. And this is something the Gravemind seems to recognise too, he screams with anger as he finally understands what Cortana has in store for him. <laughs> Last I see, her secret is revealed! And again, he voices his displeasure as players blow up a series of reactors in order to destroy High Charity. Finally, power has well and truly transferred from the Gravemind and the Flood back to the player, but it's a real shame that all that's left to do at this point is escape the city as it crumbles. This would have been the ideal point for a boss fight, or the aforementioned encounter with the Gravemind to have been placed. Buoyed by their impending victory, a climactic battle would have been the perfect way for players to feel like they'd struck a truly decisive blow against a seemingly insurmountable foe they'd been fighting across three separate titles. Instead, Cortana's ending sequence boils down to a race through High Charity to escape before the city self-destructs. It's like a less exciting version of the end of Halo Combat Evolves the More. There, players began a chain reaction and escaped via a dramatic Warthog segment. Here, unfortunately, it's an unexciting race to the finish on foot. Players still do get another Warthog sequence in Halo 3's final moments, but I can't help but feel it would have been the better ending for this mission, especially given the level's previous parallels to the Moor. And, like many other areas of Cortana, it's still far too easy to get lost, especially in a situation where the player is constantly forced to move forward at a pace through a repetitive environment. Clear waypointing here would have done wonders. There is, however, time for one nice final touch before the mission ends, with the Arbiter appearing, flamethrower in hand, to back Master Chief up for the final leg of the escape. It has no real impact on gameplay, and little on the story, other than it's used to quickly inform Cortana that the pair are now allies, but nonetheless, it's a fun way to end the level. And with that, the level concludes, and I think the word fun is probably the key word here, because while the level does do a few nice things here and there, occasionally in terms of atmosphere and more often in terms of story, it simply isn't very fun. After the hate the library received from most who played it following Halo Combat Evolve's release, I thought that would be the catalyst for Bungie never making the same mistake again. But here we are, two games later, and it seems the same mistakes have still been made. And it's a crying shame, because both the library and Cortana had an importance outside of gameplay that could have made them some of the best the series had to offer if they were actually an enjoyable experience to play. Would I like to play another level like Cortana in a future Halo? In gameplay terms, absolutely not, but assuming the Flood do feature in Halo Infinite, I still think there's a glimmer of hope that one day we may get a level like Cortana or the Library which fixes the glaring flaws discussed during this video. It's a tall order, yes, but perhaps 343 Studios could be the ones to finally break the curse of the Library and Cortana. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell, and do leave a comment as well, I'd love to hear from you. And hopefully, I'll see you all again soon.